experiencing. It's great to read about it, but it's better to experience it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we went through the whole book of Acts. Uh, we didn't go, you know, verse, but we went through chapter by chapter and got all the main points. So we could have been there to Jesus Christ comes back. Believe me, there's so much revelation in the book of Acts that uh, we, we could be there forever. But now we're entering in a new book, the book of Ephesians. Everyone say Ephesians. And we're going to be talking about we are living in the blessings of God. How many are in the blessings of God? Amen? Amen. 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 And this book that Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus is full of revelation. And it's going to help us grow spiritually and set us free from the spirit of religion. Because that spirit of religion is strong in, in a lot of people's lives and a lot of churches. It, is, it goes in there and it's what destroys communion with God. When you put religion on people, in other words, you're putting on rules and regulations that the Bible doesn't even put on people. Yeah. Amen. That's what Jesus was talking about, the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's like, you tell them to do things that you don't even do yourself. You require them to live at a higher standard that you're not even living at. I know no one here, right? Amen. But if we just stepped on your toes, just say, ouch. Amen. <laughs> and so we're going to get rid of that spirit of religion in people's lives. And, and the book of Ephesians uh, talks about that spirit of religion and, and getting rid of it. It's not a very big book. It's not like Acts where it has 28 chapters. It's a smaller book. But it's full of wisdom for us in this day that we live in, especially today in this society that we're living in and all this confusion that's going on. I was watching a, a video on the way to church today, this morning. Not I was driving and watching. I was just listening. Amen. I already know some of y'all like, Pastor Rob, why are you watching a video while you're driving? I wasn't watching the video. I was just listening. Amen. Amen, amen. I'm not getting in no accidents. Amen. And uh, they were talking about, and they were showing how they were teaching children. You know, they looked about, probably about six, seven, eight years old at the most. And they were talking about them, of what they should be calling themselves. And they were telling them, just because you were born with boy, boy parts, and as a boy doesn't mean you're a boy. And just because you were born with girl parts doesn't mean you, were, you are a girl. And they were teaching them how they can change their mind day by day. Amen. If you feel like a girl today, you're a girl. If you feel like a boy today, then you're a boy. And they were teaching them about pronouns. You know, what do you want to be called? He, she, what, you know, fluid, genuine, and know, fluidity, and all this craziness that is going on. And you see these little kids like, have no clue what they're talking about. You know, I remember when I was six, seven, and eight, all I cared about was Tonka toys and, and, and cars. Amen. Amen? And girls, whatever you, you know, Barbie dolls, I don't know what you guys played with, but I played with cars and dirt and something called my imagination. Amen. <laughs> How many of you guys remember that? Amen. I remember. When you don't have, you remember, remember? <laughs> When you didn't have a lot of money to buy a lot of toys, all of a sudden you had what is called imagination. Amen. And then all of a sudden a tree became like a house and, you know, this little ant became, you know, Chewbacca. And, yeah. and I started, you know, doing things like that. I used my imagination. You know, I imagine today I lock my kids outside. They, they won't know what to do. They're like, where do I plug in the PlayStation 5? Uh, we didn't have PlayStation 5. Our PlayStation was go out and play and find you a station <laughs> to play at. Amen. Amen. How many remember that? And now the, teaching these kids all this craziness. All this craziness. And these kids, they're just kids. Let them be kids. But they're teaching them, you don't have to be this. You can be that. You know, just because you were born a boy don't mean you're a boy. And, and, and they're out there teaching this in the classroom yeah. today yeah. throughout the country. God help us. Yeah. We need prayer. 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 We need Christians to stand up. 
We need people to be vocal. We need people to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth of God. You know, we're not here to water down the gospel. We're here to bring the gospel at 100%. And if it offends people, we do it in love. But the gospel is offensive. It is offensive to those who don't believe. That's what the word of God says. You can't preach the gospel and say people are sinners without offending somebody. But you show them in love. You're not there to condemn them. You're not there to send them to hell. You're there to let them know that Jesus Christ loves them and that there is hope and there is a better way. And all they got to do is turn to Jesus Christ. The church should be a place of love. The church should be a place of hope. But we don't accept the sins of this world. And I pray that this book of Ephesians will be a blessing to you and help your spiritual life grow stronger. So let's dive right in into chapter one. We're just going to do one verse today. That's all we have time for is one verse because there's so much revelation in this one verse. And I could have dug out a whole lot more, but uh, we would be here till five o'clock and I'd probably be preaching to me and probably chairs. Not even my wife probably would stay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> They'll be like, we'll catch you online, Pastor Rob. Just keep the stream going. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. I won't say blessed. blessed. He blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in who? Christ. Woo, man. I told you we could be here all night long just in this one little verse. Now, the word blessed here, the first one where it says, blessed be God the Father, because we're going to be talking about the word blessed throughout this scripture, and we're going to look at what the Greek says, because they're different words. You know, in English, we're kind of limited, you know, just like, you know, in love. We say the word love, but in the Greek, there's four different types of love. But in English, we can only say love. So you can love chocolate, and you can love your your children, and there's no different word. There's just love. But in the Greek, there's four types of love. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to preach in it because that'll send us down another path that we're not going to go down today. You want to learn about it? Google it. Amen. (laughs) Or we'll talk about it in another sermon, but not today. So the word blessed here is only used to speak of God the Father and the God the Son, Jesus. So this word that's in the Greek, and we're going to explain what it means in the Greek, But this word in the Greek is the word blessed only is used when it's referring to God the Father and Jesus Christ, God the Son. It's the only time it's ever used this word blessed, even though in English we just see the word blessed throughout the scripture and we think it's the same word and it's not. That's when you got to dig in deep. How many of you know there's more than just of the surface of what the word of God speaks about to us? See, some of us, we're just surface readers. I know not here. I know not here. Especially today with all the technology we have. See, when I went to Bible school, I had to actually have these things called books. Yeah. You know, and I had to actually look it up. I had to actually go to a library. Yes. How many of you guys remember that place? Yes, yes, yes. And the Dewey Decimal System. Amen, amen. You had to pull that, that card index thing like 20 feet out and you had to look through it. To find out where your book is, some of these young people are like, what are you talking about? I just turn on my iPad, hit Google, and say, where is this? And boom, everything pops up. Well, it wasn't like that back in the day. You had to have like a this library card. And it, and it made you kind of proud when you had a library card. You're like, man, I'm somebody. I got a library card. You know, and I could go in there and I could check out books. And I came back out with books. And, and I had to learn by going through all these books and all these encyclopedias and all these um, concordances. And, and that's how I had to study in Bible school. We didn't have the Internet at that time. Imagine that. And I'm only 25. Imagine that. I don't know how that worked. I don't know how that worked out, but it did. But it did. That's how I had to study. And so you have the opportunity now, no matter what your age is, if you you're 60 years old and say, well, I don't know how to use the computer, Pastor. Well, guess what? Learn. Talk to your five-year-old grandson. They'll teach you. <laughs> how many of you know that them little children know how to turn that bad boy on? 
They, they go like, hey, hey, Papi, you're, you're working the iPad wrong. This is how you do it. I'm like, what? Man, they're, they're quick, aren't they? They learn, they, they know that computer stuff quickly. So if you don't know how to work a computer, just talk to a child. They'll teach you quickly how to run it, and they'll probably take you to the games first. So, Papi, let's play Roblox. No, we're not here to play Roblox. We're here to study the Word of God. Just teach me how to get to Google and how to look up things. So do that. Don't just read the word. You know, that's important, reading the word. But now study it. Because what does the scripture say? Study to show yourself approved. You got to go deep. You got to go deep. How many of you, when you're eating, you know, chuletas or arroz con gandules or rice or, you know, you just skim the top and just say, you know what, I'm just going to eat the top. And then I'm going to leave everything else. You can tell I don't do that. Amen. And I know some of you, I look at you, you don't definitely do that either. Amen. <laughs> How, what do you do? You get that fork and you go deep in there, don't you? You say, give me some of them candules, give me some of that rice, give me some of that chuleta, give me some of that enchilada. I'm going in deep. I ain't going to just eat the cheese on the top of the enchilada. I'm going to eat it all up, man. I'm going to eat the cheese. I'm going to eat the tortilla on the bottom. I'm going to get the beans. I'm going to get everything. But why do we do that for the word? We just skim the top. And we we think, oh, man, I'm full. Mm. No, that was nothing. That was just an appetizer. Dig in deep, and you're going to see how much better it is, how good the word is. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Somebody praise the Lord. So the word blessed here, as I went deep into it, It's only used to speak about God the Father and God the Son. Now, the word blessed means this in the Greek. It means worthy of all our commitment. How many of you know some of us are committed to a lot of things? And some of the things we're committed to, we shouldn't be. Amen. Some of our relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, we shouldn't be committed to. I know, I know. I'm starting to meddle a little bit. (laughs) Those of you married, you're committed. Too late. (laughs) You picked the wrong one, too late. You're committed. Amen. But we all have commitments. If you have a house, guess what? You got a commitment. Or an apartment, you got a commitment. You got to pay the rent, the mortgage, and the gas and the light. You can't duck the gas man forever. (laughs) Some of you know what I'm talking about. Y'all be acting like you ain't home. Who is it? You send your little kid out there. Hey, my daddy said he's not home and you can't turn off the gas today. <laughs> Believe me, I've seen it all. When I, when I went door knocking for the, for the school system and knocking on the door, they thought I was the rent center repo man. You ain't going to take my TV, are you? No, I'm not here for that, but I'm here to make sure why you ain't in school. Yeah. I, I've heard all types of things at the door. You don't even want to know. It means this, worthy of our commitment. It means praise worthy, deserving every good acknowledgement. This is what that word blessed means. When it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It means worthy of our commitment. See, the only one who's truly worthy of our full 100% commitment is God. Because guess what? He's going to be fully committed to us. Everyone on this earth can fail you but God. When he says, I'm committed to you, guess what? He's committed. You could be in the worst of conditions in your life. You could be down in the junkyard. You could be in the worst sin condition. And God says, I'm still committed to you. I'll leave the 99 and I'll come and get you and I'll lift you up and I'll cleanse you in Jesus' name. He ain't going to leave you. How many of you ever been left by some friends? Amen. How many of you ever been in a fight and you say, hey, me and my friends got you, and the guy looks at you, what friends? Amen. And they are running gone, and you're like, whoa. Commitment. Nowadays, commitment means nothing. In re- marriage, commitment is nothing. Well, today I'm committed to you. Tomorrow I don't feel it. I'm gone. But thank God. He don't look at commitment like we look at commitment. 
He says, I'm so committed, I'm going to send my son to die on the cross for you and make a covenant with you because that's how much I love you. I'm committed 100%. And God is saying, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because he's the only one worthy of your commitment. He's praiseworthy, deserving every good acknowledgement. Everything good you say about the Lord is true, plus more. And a bag of chips. You can't say enough about God. You know how you can exaggerate over certain people? Yeah, man, this guy, he's so good, man. He can play, he can sing, and, you know, he's your son, and they come up, and you're like, ooh, man, not really. You can over-acknowledge the person, but you can never, ever over-acknowledge God. Everything you say about God that is good is true and plus more. You can't say enough. There's not enough words in the language of man in every language that can say enough about our God. That's how praiseworthy he is. You can make up words and it still wouldn't be enough. See, the People will make sure they stay committed to other things and sacrifice what really they should commit to first. See, you'll make commitments on Sundays to go to the beach, to go to the concert, and you'll break your commitment with God in a second. I know not you here. I know. I know other people. God has a commitment with you every Sunday. He says, I want to meet with you on Sunday. I've got a commitment. I'm committed to be there. God says, are you committed to come? Amen. I know you guys are because you're here. Amen. Amen. See, Paul is telling us we need to be committed. See, there are people who put their relationship with God, with their church, with their ministry behind other things. See, Paul's telling us that the Ephesus church, that God and Jesus should be worthy of your full commitment and they deserve every good thing you can say and do for them. You can't do enough good things for God. Because you know what God says about our good things? The word of God says they're like a filthy rag to him. Your best deed on your best day The Bible says it's like a filthy rag. So you can't even do enough good things. But you keep doing them because you love him. And when you're covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, all of a sudden those filthy rags becomes a sweet incense into the throne room of God. Matthew 6.33 tells us to put God first and then everything else will be added to you. Whatever you need. You need finances? Put God first and it'll be added. You need a relationship? Put God first and he'll bring someone along the way your path that loves God more than you. And then we'll love you and, and, and take care of you or you take care of them. You put God first. Everyone say first. And the scripture says it's a promise. Everything else you need, I'll give it to you. I'll add it to you. I'll put it in your account. How many of you ever opened up a bank account, you know, you, you had it open and you opened it up online or whatever, and, and, and you see it, and you're like, oh, there was some more money that you weren't expecting. And something got added to you that you didn't even know was coming, or you didn't realize that you were going to receive it. Amen. And all of a sudden, guess what? You're starting doing that little holy hip-hop dance. <laughs> yeah. Like, praise the Lord! I can eat meat now instead of spam, Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you want to live in the blessings of God, then bless God first with everything you have, yeah. your time, your talents, and your finances. Yes. Yeah. Give it to him first, and God says, I'll give you everything else that you need, and it'll be more than enough, because our God is a more than enough God. He's more than enough. He's an overflowing God. He don't just fill up your cup. He overflows it. You ever been to a place, you know, a house or a restaurant, and all they do is give you like half cup full? Yeah. And you're like, um, excuse me, a little more here. Yes, please. Fill it up. 
I want it to the top. I'm paying for it. Right. Come on. See, but God says, guess what? You ain't even got to ask. Ooh. I'm going to fill it. And when you think I'm going to stop, guess what? I'm going to pour even more so that you can be a blessing to others. Because the blessing I'm giving to you is for you to share. And the more you give out, guess what? The more I pour in. And so it's better for you to give than to receive because I'm going to bless you with more. Man, that's how good our God is. And then Ephesians tells us that God has blessed us in the second part of the verse, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. So now we got blessed is God, the Father, and the Son. We learned that's a, a, a word just for God, the Father, and God, the Son. And now Ephesians tells us that God has blessed us. Now the word blessed here in the Greek means this, a different word now. God speaks, what it means is that God speaks a good word over you. Ooh, man. If you ever want anyone to speak a good word over you, it's God. It's God. Everybody else can tell me whatever. But as long as God speaks over my life something good, oh, man, it is powerful. Remember that old song? Tell me something good. Man, that's what I want. I want to hear something good from God. Because when it's from the Lord, guess what? I know it's going to come to pass. Y'all can say what you want about me, but this is what God says. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Lord, speak over my life. Speak something good. This is what the word bless says, that God is speaking a good word over you. So when the devil comes and tells you you're not enough, that you're, you're nobody, you're going to end up like your father or your mother, or you're going to be dead, you're going to be in the gang, you're going to be in drugs, you're going to be an alcoholic, you say, no, my God says I am blessed and I'm highly favored. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed wherever I I walk it is a blessed place because I'm there Amen. because God sent me here yes, yes, yes. how many of you want God to speak a good word over you Amen. Amen. he said God speaks a good word over us it also means this what God speaks over us is a benefit to us <laughs> what God speaks to you always benefits you Guess what? I can say some things that won't benefit you. Amen. Others can say things that won't benefit you, but every word that comes out of God's mouth is a benefit to you. Amen. So, Lord, speak to me. Yes. That should be your prayer. Lord, speak to me, because every word you say, even though it might be a word of correction, guess what? It's a word that benefits me, because it's going to shape me up. It's going to put me back on the right path. I might have stepped to the left. I might have stepped to the right. I might be out of top pocket for a little bit, but when God speaks to me, it's going to set me straight, and it's going to be a benefit to me. Amen. My God. Told you, man, this is just one little verse. And we're only talking about the same word in English twice already. Look how much revelation is when you dig in there. Amen. But if you just read it, you just think, especially in English, you just think bless, bless, bless. It all means the same thing. When it doesn't, no. there's some deep revelation when you dive in deep. This is why it's important. Who is speaking over your life today? Come on. You can't just allow anybody to speak over your Come life. You can't just allow anybody just to walk up to you and say, I got a word of the Lord for you. Wait a minute now. Who are you? Where did you come from? What church you belong to? Who is your covering? What's the name of your pastor? Well, I ain't got one. I don't believe in church. Well, guess what? Then you don't believe in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ died for the church. And if he died for the church, you got to believe in the church. You got to be part of the church. You can't be out there just... You know, shooting, you know, words out from the, your hip. Amen. Who's covering you? So go take that word to somewhere else. Because this place is protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. So don't be, you know, a, a word junkie. Always looking for a word for the Lord. Give me a word, give me a word, give me a word, give me a word. No, 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 no. Be careful who's speaking over your life. Because is it going to be a benefit? 
See, if the Lord is sending them, it's going to bless you. But first, you got to show me who you are. You know, here in the church, we know, so we're, we're, we're covered here. But when you're out on the street, you don't know who that person is. You don't know if the enemy sent them. So give me some credentials. And then when you give it to me, I ain't just going to swallow it whole and accept everything you say. I'm going to take it before the Lord because the Bible says, take every word that you receive and bring it to me. And I'll let you know through the spirit of discernment if it's coming from me or if it's coming from the enemy. Because the enemy can give you a word too. Yes, he can. And it sounds good, just what you want. Mm. But it's going to lead you down the right path, wrong path. Mm. Look at when he came to Adam and Eve, he gave them a good word. Uh-huh. They wanted to hear it. Oh, we wanted to eat that, and now we can? All right, let me try it. Uh-huh. And look what happened. Now we're out here suffering in the heat, working. Amen. Exactly. And Amen. you women are suffering having babies. Amen. And all the curses that came along with that, because they thought that was a good word. But it was a word from the enemy. So don't just let anybody speak over your life. Be careful. Be careful. There's wolves out there that are acting like sheep. So you have to make sure that those people are filled with the Holy Spirit and will speak the blessings of God over you. You know what? Let me give you an interview. Are you a tongue talker? No? Well, then keep, keep stepping. <laughs> I know it's quiet in this Presbyterian church now. Yeah. See, that's a gift of the Spirit. That's when you know that you're filled with the Spirit. You speak in tongues? I'm not saying that's for salvation. We're talking about now you're, you're receiving a word from me. I need to know who you are. I need to know what spirit fills you up. Because, man, I only receive from the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit want to use you, praise the Lord. I'm ready to receive. Believe me, I'll I'll take it from a child if it's from the Spirit of the Lord. It doesn't matter your age. Amen? Amen? It just matters what spirit the source is coming from. You can be 50 years old, but if that source is, is the devil, then it's witchcraft. I need to hear from the source, from the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Then I'll receive it. See, Ephesians tells us that God speaks every spiritual blessing over our lives. That's what he says there. He says, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing? And the word every in the Greek means every, all. Every spiritual blessing comes from the Lord. Whether it's spoken through a person, but it came, originated from the Lord, through the Holy Spirit. Every blessing that is spoken over your life originates from God. God says, I'm the one who blessed you. I got you. Now, the word every in the Greek means this, fully, totality. Every part that applies. It emphasizes the whole picture first. Then it goes into one piece at a time. That's what the word every means. That God sees the whole picture, but guess what? He's going to give it to you at a piece at a time. See, some of you see that whole pie, you want to eat it all, but guess what? You got to start with one piece. And then once you hit one piece, and you say, you know what? I'll just eat one more. Then sooner or later, by the end of the day, you're like, what happened to the pie? You're like, "Oh, oh, it's right here. I ate it one piece at a time. And what happened at the end? I got the total pie. And that's how God works. He'll give it to you one piece at a time until you get the totality of the blessing. Because if he was to give it to you all at once, you wouldn't know how to handle it all at once. You'll mess it up. So God says, I'll give it to you one piece at a time. That's what the word every means. He says he's going to give you every blessing. Every blessing that's written in the word of God, that's yours It's yes and amen in Christ Jesus. But guess what? I can't give you all of it at one time. I'm going to give it to you piece by piece. As you show yourself faithful. Now follow me. God releases every blessing that he has over us, but he manifests it one piece at a time. See, once you become a good steward of that piece of blessing that he gives you, he's going to release to you more because you're a good steward of the blessing. Jesus talked about that in many parables. 
And what did he do from the one who was an unfaithful steward? He took that, what he had, yes. and he gave it to the one yeah. who was faithful, who had a lot already. See, that's the opposite of what America says today. America says, well, if they're blessed, I'm going to take it from them and give it to people wow. who don't know how to use it. Wow. That's called socialism. Yeah, it is. And what do all the young people say? Yeah, yeah, that's the way it should be. No. no, they earned that. They work for that. See, God will give you your blessing when you're faithful in the little. God says he'll bless you with more. And if you're unfaithful with the little, he's going to take the little you got and give it to the one who is faithful. Come on now. So don't be upset at me because God is blessing me. Be faithful with what you got, and guess what? He'll bless you. Amen, amen. See, what's so great about God is he, he has so much. It doesn't matter how much he blesses me with. He's got more to bless you, too. So rejoice with me, and I'll rejoice with you. And together we rejoice in the blessings of the Lord. Amen. See, that spirit of religion will cause jealousy to come in. Well, why is God blessing him? Why is God blessing her? Be faithful and God will bless you too. There's not a limited amount of blessing. It's unlimited. Be faithful. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You'll see it throughout the four Gospels how God says, if you're blessed and you're faithful with what I give you, I'll keep giving you more. I'll keep giving you more. But those who are not faithful, I'm going to take it away. Look at the story of the fig tree. It didn't have what Jesus wanted. He was ready to curse it and, and kill it right then and there. So this mentality that's in America today, that's a, that's a mentality of a demon. And so many of our young people are falling into it because they're, they're spreading it on the news. They're spreading it on TV shows. They're spreading it all over music. And so they're believing it. Oh, it's not fair. It's not fair that they got this and I ain't got that. Well, work for it and you get it too. Right, amen, amen. Get you a J-O-B. Yes. Go to school. Yes. Start a business. Yes. Do something. Don't just sit on the couch and say, give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. <laughs> that's, a lot of, that's the mentality of a lot of our young people today. Yes, they think that's the way it should be when it's the enemy twisting what God has said. God says, when you're faithful, I got you blessed. You ain't got to worry about finances. You ain't got to worry about nothing. When you're faithful to me, when you put me first, everything else shall be added unto you. Ephesians 1.3, back to 1.3 says, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He's going to release more to you as a good steward. Now, the word blessing here in the Greek means this. Now, this is the third blessing. Who's, excuse me. The, 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 yeah, the third blessing with every spiritual blessing. Now, the word blessing in the Greek means this. Gift or praise. The word spiritual in the Greek means realm of the spirit. The dimension where the Holy Spirit imparts faith and reveals Jesus Christ to you. So that third blessing, check that out, means the realm of the Spirit. The, excuse me, the word spiritual means the realm of the Spirit, the dimension where the Holy Spirit imparts faith and reveals Christ to you. The third blessing means gift or praise. So when you praise the Lord, check this out. When you praise the Lord, he says he's going to open up new realms of the spirit for you, new dimensions that you can enter in and grow and do greater things for Jesus Christ. But you got to get your praise on. You can't come to church on Sunday morning and have your hands down and look like you just sucked on some lemons and expect God to open up some doors for you. You got to come in ready to jump, ready to dance, ready to shout ready to clap your hands and say I'm in the house of the Lord and I'm here to worship because Jesus says I'm looking for worshipers who will worship me in spirit and in truth 
Because I know some of you are out in the club, and when they put that song on, your song, you were like, that's my song, that's my song, let me get out there. And you ain't got no rhythm, but you still were out there dancing, weren't you? Everybody laughing at you, you say, let them laugh, I don't care. You, hey, a lot of stuff that we did when we were young, thank God we didn't have TikTok and all that back then. They, so they can't prove anything we did back then. All you young people today, 30 years from now, you're going to regret what you put up on TikTok. All that dancing, and you'll be like, what was I thinking? I mean, we did the same crazy things, but you ain't got proof of it. So <laughs> We didn't have TikTok. We didn't have none of that stuff. Snapchat. We didn't have none of that stuff, so you can't prove a thing what we did. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Amen. A lot of you say thank the Lord because you know Amen. you looked all goofy up on that club scene. Sure but you didn't care what people thought. You was out there, but then all of a sudden you come to church and you want to be. Oh, no, I can't move. But the Bible said David danced before the Lord, man. Why do you stop dancing? If you dance for the devil, why can't you dance for God? Why can't you come to the house of the Lord and celebrate? And if you look goofy, you're looking least goofy for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Believe me, they won't put the cameras on you. Don't worry. Unless you're looking real goofy, maybe they might focus on you. <laughs> but don't be afraid, man. We got to come here to worship. This ain't no funeral service. Let your worship loose. And if you're around people that don't know how to worship, say, hey, you know what? You're either going to worship with me or you're going to get hit with my hands. So either move or worship. We got to get a, you know, a roll flow going here. Yeah. I'll lead it, you all follow. Right. If I don't got no rhythm, well, at least if you don't got no rhythm, we're good. Let's go. Yeah. If you got rhythm, we'll put you in a different section. Amen. Right. With those who know how to, you know, flow a little better. But we got to worship God. Amen. This is what church is about. It's got to be fun. We're here to bless the Lord. That's why the Bible says, bless the Lord, all oh my soul. Yes. I come in here and I give you everything I got. I tell you, when I leave here, I've laid it all at the altar. I don't leave oh. nothing behind. That's right. I, I leave tired. I tell you that. I, I leave Amen. tired. Because I've given it everything. Because I know. I said, I got people here who are hungry. How can I not give God my 100%? Amen. So I lay it all. I don't reserve. I don't hold nothing back. I just say, here, Lord, this is it. Let's go. We're going to jump in. We're going we're gonna to move. And God is, sees that, and he'll honor that. Amen. He'll honor your worship. Even if you don't sing in tune, that's okay. Just sing. Amen. Just sing. You ain't on the mic, so just sing. Sing as loud as you want. Amen. This is Amen. the house of the Lord. We're going to worship God. You don't know the songs? Learn them. You learned the other songs? <laughs> Put them songs on back from the 70s. Let's get it up. You already know. You already know the word. You ready? Why? You learned them. You didn't need no one to put them on no screen for you. Well, Pastor, the, the words ain't on the screen. Well, learn the songs. Learn them. Learn worship songs. Memorize them. Amen. You memorize them worldly songs? It wasn't hard for you, was it? As soon as you hear that first note, you, you can turn off the main singer and you sing the whole song. But all of a sudden it comes to church. Oh, Pastor, I need the words. <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't need the words to be singing the mother songs. Pity sand in the club. You knew it all. It's your birthday. I'm going to party. Oh, no. <laughs> you guys are already going in your mind. You already know what comes next. You already know the words. And then we sing simple songs, you know, like the old school, I exalt thee. That's the whole words. And you're like, I need the words. It's I exalt thee. <laughs> I, but I forget, is it exalt? Is it lift? Is it? I got anxiety, pastor. I need the words.
<laughs> but yeah, I've been in church long enough. I've heard it all. Back in the day when we used to put the little things on the screen, remember that, those little transparencies? Yes. Yes. Flip the paper! <laughs> Young people, we used to do it with the little plastic things and project it on the wall. And before that, we had this thing called a hymn book. <laughs> All the songs are in the book. Turn to page 54. We're going to sing first verse and third verse. <laughs> Some of these young people are like, what are you talking about? That's old school there. That's old school. Do we still have them? <laughs> they still exist. They're out there. But worship God. Amen. Worship him. This place should be on fire for worship. Hallelujah. It should be on fire for worship, man. We have space here. You can come to the yeah. front. You can jump. You can dance. You can get on your knees. You can lay prostrate before the Lord. However you want to worship. You ain't got to stay in your seat. This is a place of worship. God loves when you worship him. Amen. And some of you be, oh, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm more reserved. Man, the Bible says make a joyful noise before the Lord. Get out of your shell because it's not about you. Amen. See, that's the problem you made. I'm more. It's not about I. Amen. It's all about him. Yes. What does he want from us? He wants us to give it 100%. If you can go to a game and, and shout and jump when they hit a home run or score a touchdown or hit a goal, you know, in soccer, when the guy screams, goal, and you're like, Las Americas, you can do it for God. You can do it. Come on in and worship. You don't lose first. You, you be the leader. You lead it off, and, and you break that ice. Amen. This is a place of worship. Let's move on. See, the Holy Spirit will take you into the new dimensions where your faith will grow and your understanding of who Jesus is will increase as well. See, as your spiritual wisdom, this is so important, your authority in the realms will increase as well. See, it's not that God is, has more authority that he's creating. The authority is already there. It's up to us to understand how do we use that authority. Well, as we increase our faith in him, our authority in him increases. Now, the word heavenly, because it says, the scripture says that um, who blesses us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now, the word heavenly, the word heavenly in the Greek means this, sphere of spiritual activities. The impact of heaven's influence. Check this out. I love this definition. The impact of heaven on a particular situation or person. How is heaven impacting you today? Ooh, come on. That's spiritual. How is heaven impacting you today? Because heaven impacts you every day. How is it impacting you as a person? If things are not changing in your life, then you need to reevaluate what you're doing. Because God is a God of change. Yes. And so if he's making an impact on your life, guess what? There's things changing. Now, it might not change at or speed that you want it to change, but it's going to change. Something's got to change. When heaven impacts you, something has to change. When two cars collide, guess what? Change. The front end, the rear end, the, the two bumpers, something's going to happen when two cars crash into each other. There's going to be a impact. Impact you. When you have to be because heaven is not going to move. So it's us. Something's going to change in us. Man, God impact me in that prayer every day. Let heaven impact me. When I wake up in the morning, heaven impact me today because I want something to change. Something in my life, whether it's small or big, you impact me today. Because something is going to change. Something is going to happen. Something is going to break. If you continue in getting delivered from demons every week, then you need to see why heaven is impacting you. 
If you're coming up here and saying, I need deliverance, okay, I will deliver you. Coming up two, three, still saying, not impacting you. It's not impacting you. It has to change. Your life has to change. We can't do it. Then you go back in the same mess. Things that got into that mess in the first place. Then heaven's not impacting you. You're here for like a shot. We're not here to just give you a shot. We're here to give you Jesus who's going to change your life. Believe me, we don't mind praying for you. We don't mind delivering you. We don't mind, you know, sweating and, and going in all the way with you. We'll do that 100% because we love God and we love you. But if it's the same thing a year later, two years later, then something is not right. You're not doing something right. We got to fix it. Either you don't want to be impacted by God. Or you're doing something wrong and we'll fix it so that you don't need it anymore and you can grow spiritually and then you can start praying for people. Amen. Because that's what God wants and that's what we want. We want you to be the ones praying for people. I don't want to be praying for people forever. I want you all to be doing it. I want you guys to be impacting people's life, praying over them, setting them free in Jesus' name. Because it's not about Pastor Rob. It's, it's all about God. And the same God that lives in me is the same God that lives in you. Yes, yes. And you can do the same thing through Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, we're going we're gonna to move forward here. See, once you're impacted by heaven, there's going to be a change in your life. Things will not and cannot be the same anymore. Amen. It can't. Because once light impacts the dark, guess what? Light, dark disappears. No matter how little the light is in that little area, that darkness will disappear. So once light, which is Jesus Christ, he says, I am the light of this world. Once he impacts your life, something's going to change. It might not be something big in the beginning, but something will change. Because light changes darkness. Today, heaven wants to impact you and set you free from any demonic attacks, heal you from any sickness or infirmities, remove all anxiety and worry from your life. This all takes place in Jesus Christ. Amen. And once you live in Christ, then your life will be changed, impacted, and marked. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. You can't accept Jesus as your Savior, and things don't change. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then things has to change. If nothing changes in your life, then you have to look at, are you doing what Jesus asked you to do? Amen. If you came up here and you accepted Jesus Christ and nothing's changing in your life, then you got to see, what did I do? Did I just repeat a prayer or did I really receive Jesus? Did I do true repentance? Because when you truly repent, things will change. Amen. You have to look, am I coming to church faithfully? Am I reading my word faithfully? Am I praying faithfully? Am I around good spiritual friends that are guiding you in the ways of the Lord? Am I filled with the Spirit? Am I studying the word of God? There has to be a change. And if there's not a change, you have to look, did I truly repent? Remember, the Greek word for repentance is metaneo meaning you change the way you think about sin. Amen. I used to think about sin this way. Now that I came to Christ, metaneo, I changed the way I think. I no longer desire to do that. Now, I might still struggle, but my desire is not to do that because now my desire is to serve the Lord. Today, if you want to be blessed by Jesus and flow in the Spirit, then we'll pray for you. You need healing today, we'll pray for you. You need deliverance today, we'll pray for you. Because we believe in the power of healing. And we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's stand. Hallelujah, Jesus. The blessings of the Lord are here for you. The blessings of God is in this place. God, we love you. We honor you. 
God, we know every good blessing comes from you, from the throne room of heaven, as heaven impacts earth. God, I want heaven to impact me today. Let that be your prayer. Heaven, impact me today, right now, here in this place. Impact me. I don't want to leave here the same. I need a change in my life. Maybe you need healing today. Maybe you're dealing with sickness or infirmities caused by the enemy and you need healing. We want to pray for you. Maybe you're being tormented by spirits and you want to be set free. You want to be delivered. God is here today to set you free. You don't have to live the same way. Maybe you want God to make an impact on your life today. Well, today God is ready to impact you. He's ready to collide with you. He's ready to bless you. As you bless God, that's only reserved for Him. God says, I will bless you with every spiritual blessing in the spirit realm heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. So this is a promise for you. You ain't got to beg for the promises of God because you're his children. He freely and openly wants to give them to you. You're struggling in your mind with anxiety, fear. The Lord wants to set you free. You have a religious mindset. God wants to deliver you from that today. Because there's freedom in Jesus. If you're online today and you say, Pastor Rob, that's me. I need prayer. I want you to just type in the word freedom. Type in the word freedom in the comment section and we're going to pray for you. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, just type in the word freedom and we're going to pray for you. Now if you're here in the sanctuary and you say, Pastor Rob, I want to be healed. I want heaven to impact me. I need deliverance. I want you to come to this altar right now. Come to this altar right now. Come, come, come. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you. We're going to believe that God is in the house. I'm going to ask my prayer warriors from my tribe teams to come up. Aralia and all those that are here. I want you to begin to lay hands on some of these people here. As many as that we have. Get in front of them. Don't stand behind them. Get in front of them. Let them know you're going to pray for them. Ask them what they need prayer for. And then we're going to pray. We're going to believe the hand of the Lord is in this house. Because there is freedom. There is freedom in Jesus' name. There is freedom. While you're up here praying, just wait. Someone's going to come to you, whether it's me or someone from the team. We're going to pray for you.
Give the Lord a praise offering today.